an impression that's a little bit different than what I intend to about something. And that is that, uh, you know, this, this idea that uh, if you're just learning to meditate and say, well, you need to meditate every day, say, oh, every day, it sounds like a lot. And say, if you meditate for an hour a day, it's even better if you meditate for two hours or four hours a day. You might start getting a feeling like, boy, that's a, that's a lot. I really want to do that. But the thing is that if you get to the point of meditating for an hour every day, you love meditating for an hour every day, and you want to do it, it's not hard. In the same way, if you get to the point of meditating two hours a day or four hours a day, it's what you want to do. It's not like it's a difficult thing that you're forcing yourself to do. And I'm saying, well, you've got to practice mindful awareness 24 hours a day. Actually, I didn't say that. The Buddha said that. You sound like, 24 hours a day. Oh, cool. You know? <laughs> and at first, it's hard. At first, it's tiring. At first, you know, you spend, you spend several hours being continuously mindful, and it's like, ah, I'm tired. I just want to watch a TV show. And, uh, you know. <laughs> there you go. But... The same thing happens after you get to the point where you can sustain sustain that kind of mindful awareness. It's the only way you want to be. And when something happens, you get tired and your mindful awareness begins to slip away. It's like you really, you miss it. You want it. It's like, ah, you've lost something that's important to you. Or you get sick or anything that interferes with it. And, And then if you end up having to watch a television program, you know, with your parents, because that's what they do. Then you watch your television program mindfully rather than, you know, <laughs> letting go. Everything about this path, all the way along, it gets better and better and better. We were talking about dukkha. The thing is that somebody who thinks their life is pretty good already, you know, why do I need to do all that? My life's not that bad. You've probably heard that before. I've heard that many times. People will come and they listen to a talk and say, yeah, well... Yeah, but why do I need to do all this? I mean, my life's pretty good, and I'm pretty happy. And I'm not trying to persuade them to do anything they don't want, do anything different. I have nothing to sell. But the thing that I can tell them with certainty is that they think their life's pretty good. They have no idea how much better it could be, you know. And like you were talking about Chris saying, it seems like there's not too much dukkha, and that's that's where I think Michael's metaphor of the salt is really, really good. Because you may taste it and say, oh, all the salt's gone. My life seems to be free of dukkha. But you don't know, you know, you don't know how much better it could be. You haven't experienced that yet. So if you practice this path, you know, this is what's said about the path. It's good in the beginning, it's good in the middle, and it's good in the end. And what that means is that no matter where you are on the path, it's really worth it. And the longer you stay on it, the better it gets. It always just keeps getting better. Um, the happiest worldling cannot know the happiness of the uh, uh, stream enter. It's just not, you haven't been there yet. You haven't had that. And the stream enterer can only imagine what it's like to have the happiness of the non-returner. And the non-returner can only uh, sit in joyous anticipation and wonder of the experience of total release that comes with becoming an arhat. So don't think of any of this as being an arduous process. Oh no, I've got to meditate every day. I've got to practice mindful awareness all the time. That sounds too hard for me. You know, uh, and don't think of it in terms of you know the amount of dukkha in my life. This is okay. I can handle this. You know, it's, it's there's, there's there's so much more that awaits you if you're willing to. And, and I'm telling you that, but there are a number of other people in the room who have had that experience as well, and they can vouch for it. Right? 
that the longer you stay on the path, the better it gets. As a matter of fact, there's a certain point that you get to, and it's it's really it's a really important point. There should be a special name for it, and I don't think there is. Uh, but there's a point you get where all you really care about is to continue practicing the Dharma, and everything else is secondary. For the main point of your life, you you're going to study the Dharma, talk to people about the Dharma, practice the Dharma, think about the Dharma, dream about the Dharma. It just, you love it. It fills your life up and you absolutely love it. I wanted to tell you about my experience uh, since I've been coming with you guys and this is my third time that we get together. You know, I do hair and in my, my career they're superficial. It's always about the outside beauty and, and that's my job to make them look beautiful for, before they live. I have no more interest of that. So it's affecting my career. I now have speeches for I mean, I always talk to my clients and I, I actually have clients that are older than me and I talk to them like they're kids. Mm -hmm. The advices that I give them, how empty they're inside. And, and the more I see them to the mirror, the more sad they look. So that's very bad business for me. It's affecting my business a lot. <laughs> I lost two clients because I, I spoke to them and gave them advice. They thought I was, you know, they didn't understand or they didn't want to hear it. I think a lot of people seem that they were so afraid to really go, like you said, some people say, oh, I'm happy, you know, I buy a car and I'm happy and then, you know, they're very materialistic and, and um, they always buy things to make themselves happy. And, and I think a lot of people seem, they seem to be afraid to look into themselves. And mm -hmm. I remember our 10 day class, we kept saying, the less you look at each other, the less you talk, the more deep you get into yourself. Mm -hmm. And and it seems like when, when I left the place the last time, I left, with, I was so energetic, I had so much, I felt like electricity. I was so, and, and I stopped at a friend's house really quick, and and I, his father had just had a big stroke. He was paralyzed, mm -hmm. and um, and I never met him before. So he introduced him to his daddy. He goes, I go, why is your daddy here? He goes, I'm taking care of him. He's paralyzed, but he's in Montana. He lives in Montana, and I said, and I feel a lot of energy. Do you mind if I touch him? You know, so I touch his head, and he was trying. He has to do exercises. He can barely. I saw him. He can barely write a six. He, could, he just couldn't do it. After I touched his head and I just broke his arm that he was having a hard time writing with, he started writing. And I, and I felt like I delivered a little bit of my energy. Mm -hmm. why, why do you... Is that normal that to give this magnetic or... Because I felt like I was so charged when I left the uh, place. And then every time I leave this place, or when I live with you guys, Incredible things happen to me right after. If I stop in places, just things happen to me. They just they don't happen like that often. You know, like this. I got a job offer, just walking into a market. So it's like it's, it's so rewarding to me. You know, and then to see my friend's father start writing, mm -hmm. and then I give him some advice. You know, and and, uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's doing really well now. Mm -hmm. He's doing therapy and stuff, but the therapy was not working for him for some reason. So I just want to be happier. He was turning the music off, his favorite music. He was so angry because of his stroke. And I said, just listen to music and just uh, be happier. Don't, don't close yourself off to everything, do things that... And I was giving him advice that, uh, why am I giving an older man advice, you know? And he's doing really well now. So it's like, it's amazing what you learn naturally mm -hmm. from this, uh, from just studying meditation, you know? So I, I think that it was a, I, I, I share my good experiences with mm -hmm. meditation. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I have a question. Um, the uh, image about enter the stream. Yes. Is it a meditation? Is it the only way to enter the stream? Is it required to attend the nirvana? Uh, is meditation the only way to enter the stream? Yeah. Well, it would seem not. But it seems that uh, it is fairly rare uh, for somebody to enter the stream without doing meditation. Because, you know, what, what keeps us in the delusion that we're in is the way our mind just, just keeps doing the stuff that it does. And so, uh, Unless something has to happen to change that, otherwise you're not going to enter the stream. But no, it's not the only way. But it's the, I would say it's the most certain way. 
it's the most certain way. So. And my second question is, the, um, you know, the, around your people, around surrounded you, you sometimes you meet the people who may not practice, may not know anything about the Dharma, is a non-Buddhist, but they have all the good qualities yeah. of the. Uh, you know, yeah. they yeah. they're very, very kind, can be very compassionate, mm -hmm. does not uh, have no desire. Um, did, can they say they have the same amount of achievement, they have a, a certain achievement, accomplishment, like a skillful meditator? Well, they have, they have a certain amount of accomplishment, yes, unquestionably. Uh, but that doesn't mean they have the kind of accomplishment that a meditator would. I mean, to, to, be, to be virtuous, to be kind, to be compassionate, these are really good things. And meditation helps those things, but, but you can develop those same qualities without meditating as well. So, uh, are these two questions, they're related. They're, you're asking, once again, I think, about the role of meditation in mm -hmm. these things. Okay. Well, the, the practice of the Dharma is a very systematic way to achieve awakening. It's, uh, it's systematic and it's certain. You know, and that's the thing. Anyone who practices this dharma and does it diligently will succeed. They will realize the benefits of the dharma. It's guaranteed. Uh, and, and I would go so far as to say that the level of achievement that any person has in their life is only limited by the length of their life and how seriously they practice the Dharma. The biggest obstacle is becoming a serious practitioner and practicing diligently. That is the biggest obstacle. Well, that, that you might get run over by a truck tomorrow and you don't have a chance, which is one reason why it's important to realize that you don't know how much life you have. and so. You know, start today, don't leave it till tomorrow, because you, you don't know what you have. But other than that, it's not that awakening is so difficult to achieve, because with this Dharma path, it is virtually certain that you will succeed. The only obstacle is how hard, how much effort you're willing to put into establishing a meditation practice, doing the practice diligently, practicing mindfulness in your daily life, practicing every aspect of the Dharma. So, it, that's the nature of the path, and, and that's the nature of the goal. Yes, there are other ways. There are people who achieve awakening without practicing this path. They practice other paths. And, amazingly, there are people who achieve awakening practicing no path at all. But they're extremely rare. And the difference is that people that achieve the goal practicing this dharma, there's many of them. And people that achieve the goal practicing other paths, there's comparatively few of them. And those that achieve the goal practicing no path at all are so very, very rare that, you know, they, they, they're, they're difficult to find. Uh, the, so that's why we practice the certain path, the sure path, the one that's been tested by all of these thousands and thousands of people for two and a half millennia, because it's worked and it keeps working. Right? So meditation is a crucial part of that path. And you can achieve success in all other, all kinds of other aspects of the practice without necessarily meditating. But the meditation is going to assist in all of those. So, does that help to yeah. get... Yeah. So you said you were confused earlier. Mm -hmm. Does that resolve yeah. the confusion? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Some people would tell you that you can't become enlightened in any other way than following the Buddhist path. But uh, I don't believe that's true because you there are people in this world, and have been many people in this world who, uh, that we know of, 
who, for, for all that we can tell, seem to be genuine and enlightened people, but they arrive there by a different path. But the wonderful thing about the Buddha is, you know, in his lifetime, he once held a gathering where there were 1,250 arhats at one place. And that's a testimony to the power of his teaching. Partly because they had no television back then. It helped a lot. <laughs> it helped enormously. Yeah. But, but, but don't they watch TV now? They, uh, a lot of the Buddhists in, in Nepal, they have television. And now I, I was yeah. reading how they into martial arts. They're they yeah. yeah. martial arts. Yeah. Well, and... But uh, I, I think if we were to look and see how successful in their practice are the Buddhist monks who watch TV, <laughs> we, we would we would see the effect of the television uh, on that. So, yeah. I think it also society maybe it's even more difficult. You know, they they make it commercial and then all all everything's in time and your mind. And they try to do everything to entail your mind to, to, to make a money to, to go into everything for commercial. It's, I think there's millions more more I mean, than before. Well, I, I agree with you that we are bombarded by television, billboards, advertising, magazines, newspapers, yeah. everything, everything. And, and by our companions with the attitudes that promote greed, right? Yeah. Greed, consumption, the idea that you can obtain happiness and satisfaction through sensual pleasures and material goods. So, and that seemed, uh, and, and definitely that's, a, that's an obstacle. On the other hand, there are a lot of people that are seeing beyond that. A lot of people who, you know, they're exposed to all of this, like, well, like the people in this room, and realize that that's that's not good enough, you know. Yeah, but I mean, the environment uh, is much much difficult than I guess two thousand years ago. You think the environment itself yeah. is more difficult? Well, the environment, commercialism. Uh, commercial. Yeah, the environment. I mean, to to be archived this inside the environment yeah. is much much difficult than two thousand years ago. Well, I, th I think it's definitely a lot more blatant nowadays. But I think 2,000 years ago, there were an, a lot of temptations. And, and the prevalent belief, even if they didn't have television to reinforce it, what people grew up being taught and what all of their friends told them is, is this is the way you should be. So, um, I, I, I grant you, it's a more difficult environment in some ways, but I, I don't think that... Uh, I think it has its positive aspects, too. So. I think 2,000 years ago, there's a lot less material wealth, and uh, a lot of people are deprived of even basic sustenance. So it's yeah. actually easier for them to think finding material wealth is the, is the answer you know, to... Uh, well, that's that's a very good point because, yeah, when you, when material prosperity is so readily available, it gives many more people the opportunity to discover that it's not the answer, right? Yeah, because if, if you can go through your entire life never having enough material prosperity, then you can always stay caught in the illusion that if only... I have this. So I think you're right. That's a very, I think that's a very real thing that happens. People who have the things that they thought they needed to make them happen, they have them and say, well, there's got to be more to life than this. This is not, this is not enough. This is not fully satisfactory. Yeah, and they also think, you know, that nowadays the compared to in the past, the people are more generous nowadays. The more people yeah. are yeah. generous because they have yeah. paths. 
I think uh, the environment is different, maybe, uh, in many aspects, but the nature of human mind probably even makes us uh, probably the same, or similar. So yeah. it's, the task is it's just uh, still the same. Well, I, I agree with you that the human mind hasn't changed in 2,500 years. Yeah. <laughs> But well, we have our own unique situation. This, this, our, our, our karma is to live in this society yeah. and to, to make our spiritual decisions and to carry out our practice in this environment. So. Um, uh, um, yesterday I saw the Scott Stoddard and I was a little bit surprised because at that age I was still trying to find happiness, you know, through partying with friends, you yeah. know, and then, and then staying out late, you know, to who, you know do a lot of unwholesome things like I don't know not less wholesome things. You don't need to tell us. <laughs> less wholesome things, not not necessarily really bad things. But uh, but but yeah, it's through that experience I learned that hey, you know, I didn't get anything out of those experiences. So yeah. they must, you know, there's I, I I'm looking for a more satisfactory answer, mm -hmm. and uh, and and because I also have a lot of you know I'm not wealthier than than a lot of people, but I have enough that I know that. This is not the answer. I, I'm always very well clothed. You know, I have more clothes than I can mm -hmm. wear for probably like three, four weeks. And uh, I have lots of food to eat. I have nice shelter, you know, cars in the garage, everything yeah. that anybody can ask for. Already. And, you know, having the things that we need makes it easier, I think, the spiritual practice. There's many people in the world that, you know, they, they don't have the things that they need starvation, disease, lack of proper shelter, sanitary facilities, things like that. It's very difficult to pursue a spiritual life under those conditions. Mm -hmm. So, we're very fortunate. We should be thankful of the very good fortune that we have. So, tremendously fortunate. Yeah. I want to talk to you about something. Just. Uh, we're thinking, we've been talking about the possibility of doing a uh, short meditation retreat over 4th of July weekend. So it'd be something like beginning on Thursday night and going Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Sunday's the 4th of July, so most people would have Monday off as a holiday. So to do that, you need to take uh, an extra day, one extra day off work. And so I was just wondering uh, what they wanted to see what sense there was of interest in that. I know summer is a busy time, people go away a lot and travel and there may not be enough may not be enough. it's short short notice too. Fourth of July is what? It's uh, less than a month away. But um, no I guess it's more than a month away. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering uh, is is there interest in something like that if we were to put it I'll together? Interested. <laughs> Michael, Where? Neil, what? Where? Well, uh, we're not sure. Is a lo possible location in Hacienda Heights and another one in Rosemead. Uh, so, yeah. What's that? It'd be, be centrally located. So, yeah. Who are not interested? Please raise your hand. <laughs> What's that? No, I was kidding. I was, I was kidding. No, what time? No, I'm kidding. No, you say not an interest. No, no. You say interest. Interested. So, with Neil. So, are interested? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What time? Some people. Uh, would be all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, it'd be start Thursday night. All day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Last month. July, July 4th weekend. Long weekend. Uh, July 4th, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you better check with your wife first. It would be, <laughs> 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 be sleeping, sleeping there. Yeah, it would, it would be <laughs> residential, so it would be staying overnight. Maybe I can say something. Yes, please do. <laughs> Maybe uh, since everybody here and I'm maybe asking some opinion uh, or your suggestion. Uh, since this year, because um, the Pagong Temple, they need to revolutionize the, the, the house we have meditated the last year, so we no longer can use that. So now we are looking for, for the place. And now it come to the 
the, the thing struggling is, I don't, we don't know if short term is better for the, the people easier to attend, or they, we prefer is a kind of one week or 10 days, because everything uh, we need to reserve ahead and, and tell them this. And, and I kind of struggling, doesn't know what's where more convenience for everybody. Definitely, once we uh, ask Chirudasa all the way from Arizona to here, we just hope that we have people here. So I would like to have more input as uh, we can and to know how we can uh, planning. Is short term okay or long term okay? And short term, that your data talk about is July because uh, uh, I already tried to arrange this since, uh, since when? <laughs> several months ago. <laughs> okay. So uh, then I keep changing the date and I'm just wondering that first, is anybody interesting for July this one? And uh, also, we also would like to have input. You, you, we love the long one week one or longer one or shorter one, which one, you know, more convenient. For, for me, one week only because of the financial and then I have dogs and my mother's 83 years old. Mm -hmm. So I can't really, I was not sure it is better. Short for me is better right now. So I short by your definition is seven days or less, right? Seven days. Uh -huh. Or less, okay. Right. So for me, uh, what would be best for me one, is one that week. at least like once a year, there's a retreat that goes over a week. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's the week plus the weekend, so maybe it's nine days or whatever that would be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't do that more than once a year. But having mm -hmm. other ones in that year that were over a long weekend, like you're talking about for July, mm -hmm. that'd be great to have one longer one and then some, you know, a couple of shorter ones. That's great. Mm -hmm. Good input. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Any yeah. other input or anything? Is a residence required? Yes. Yeah. Because the idea of these retreats is we want you to be able to get totally focused so that you're basically you meditate from the time you get up till the time you go to bed. You know, I mean, you have your meals and things like that. So, and it's also in silence, total silence. So, so the idea of a retreat is to be able to get into it very intensely. Well, if you've never done something like that before, it sounds very, wow, I'm going to meditate all day. Check with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check with you can write a letter for you. Recommendation <laughs> <laughs> letter. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the other thing that I am interested in is, is doing uh, a retreat or retreats for, for people that have been meditating for some time. So, uh, Know, so that we can get really deeply into it. So a, a retreat for experienced meditators with, uh, you know. Yeah. That, that is the thing that I really, really want to say is I really appreciate Tuadasa. Uh, this time, uh, uh, this trip, he came and he kind of agreed one thing, is that uh, I see from past year to now, uh, I really see how several of us really devoting and really want to get into the uh, Dharma practice. And uh, I just sincerely hope that, talk to Chiradasa, um, we need a, a, a teacher, guidance, go deeper, not just introduction, not just a lecture, but really practice and go deeper level. And uh, um, Chiradasa, uh, thinking about and he agreed want to be that kind. I, I, I mentioned to him, he said, Dalai Lama come to LA, for example, those great uh, teacher. that's so great, we can go to listen, but we, we so difficult to follow him to practice because he's not available and that not cannot really guiding us. He can give us the, the, the great lecture, but now, now guidance for practice. And uh, I just invite Chiradasa to see if can help us for those we really want to get into. And uh, I really appreciate <laughs> Chiradasa willing to do that. So maybe in the future we will do, even though not a big group, if some 
of us willing to that. And let me know, and I will see if that can happen. And um, also, uh, now we kind of idea trying to see if we can have a one long once a year and, and so several ones small one. But I also need help. <laughs> now I just say, not just me, I just say we need help. <laughs> it's uh, because um, everything I try to uh, low down the cost because I know we we have a lot of expanding. So I try to minimize that. And uh, beside Donna and uh, those uh, uh, expanding for food or lunging, I try to lower as much as we can. Then we can attend more times. And last year we be fortunate as the Papong Temple gave that as a free. We just gave some donation. But this year I'm looking for a lot of praise and got uh, uh, discouraged a lot. Okay, so if someone here or you have a friend or you know some place, maybe possibility can give uh, the location for Leonard Irving for us to retreat. Please let me know and I can contact at uh, a lower cost. And this year, still fortune, we can maybe one or two place, but this is still temporary for this year. We don't know for next year. And I go, oh, we are thinking about go to. Uh, the the uh, the retreat center, but usually that is a whole lot more expensive than that. So that's why I hesitate. I still looking for if you know uh, any place or center or or even though uh, the person has big mansion <laughs> or, or or resort or whatever willing to to let us use, please let me know. I would really appreciate. Okay, so. So, are we gonna you know, short time do this? We can show not the long. What's that? This to live weekend. Well, I think because it's short notice, I, that I think people would have a difficult time arranging to have work off. And okay. that, that's why I was suggesting, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, because taking one day off of work and getting a four-day retreat. Sounded like a good idea, but if I'm wrong, and if you know you'd rather take two weeks off, mm -hmm. <laughs> let me know. Yeah. So, so it's okay for for from July second to July fifth. It would be second July to the sixth or fifth. Fifth, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll keep we'll we'll see what we can work out on this, and we'll let you know. And. Uh, and if you could also let other people that you know who might be interested. So. Okay. Well, I've had a great time. Uh, if you have any remaining questions or anything you'd like to talk about, we have a few minutes, but not too many minutes since they want us out of here by 4.30. <laughs> yes? Question about a schedule. Yes, daily, uh, daily seeing schedule. Um, when I went to the uh, Tinan House Temple in San Diego, it was a deer park. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the one very interesting aspect of what they have practiced, they, they ring a bell for, for 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So when the bell rings, everybody's got to stop and pay attention to the breath. And it, uh, I think, uh, so then, Maybe, maybe uh, there's two kind of uh, schedule. One is regular, like uh, one section in the morning and uh, section another section in the evening. But maybe also we can do uh, short, short, uh, more sections, but uh, short, shorter uh, period of time. For example, like 20 minutes in the morning, and then if we can catch up uh, a, a section during in the morning. Um, 10 o'clock, <laughs> then we begin four or five short section in the daytime. So which one is better or do you have any ideas or suggestions? Well, my personal experience, and I'm happy to hear from other people as well, is that there's a tremendous advantage to longer sits, especially on a retreat. Um, as a matter of personally, when I go on retreat, I often end up sitting two, three hours at a time. Now. 
one of the things that we have done is to uh, ring the bell every half hour and then the person decides, each person decides for themselves if they continue sitting until the next time the bell rings. So this allows somebody to decide half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and there's an advantage of that, especially when there's a mixture of more of newer meditators who can't sit as long and experienced meditators who may want to sit for two or three hours. So there's an advantage to that. But uh, my preference is, and the only problem with that is if you ring the bell every half hour and somebody's doing a two hour sit, it means three times during their sit they get interrupted by the bell ringing and people getting up and leaving and other people coming in. Yeah, but it's not, it's not too bad if you're, if you're a really good meditator, you don't mind that too much. No, no, my question is uh, if we have to go to school or work. Oh, oh you're talking about your personal it's daily like practice. Set, so, so maybe, maybe my your personal, personal daily schedule. practice. Yeah. Okay, and so what would be the alternative you're asking about again? Uh, more short sections. Uh, as opposed to one long one? One, oh, one longer in the morning or another one longer in the evening. I just feel like that. Uh, mm-hmm. During the morning and, and evening section, it's kind of too long, so the mind is kind of, it's very easy to you know, wander away. So it's kind of we need to remind ourselves constantly. Mm-hmm. If possible, we can you know, catch more short sections. Well, what I usually suggest is that you try to do uh, at least one sit, uh, 45 minutes or an hour every day. And then, you know, you might sit, I uh, might do other shorter sits in addition to that. But I feel like it's something that, that I would recommend every person experiment with and be honest in your evaluation and also be aware that it might change for you. That uh, you know, you might, at one point in your in the process, you might find longer sits are more beneficial. At another point, you might find that doing several shorter sits are beneficial. So, I, I've always favored uh, at, at least 45 minutes to an hour at a time. But I also recognize that not everyone is the same as me. And so, so I don't know if that's very helpful to you. <laughs> uh, to, you probably prefer I said, no, this is the way you have to do it. <laughs> well, I just kind of have, have this idea. Yeah. I haven't tried to. Do you, how long do you normally sit now? Well, morning, I don't sit that long. I just, uh, you sh- the shock will be 40, 30 minutes longer. With, uh, all in, uh, An hour and a half. Yeah. Same happens to the evening. It's high. Yeah. If when when you're busy, you you know you need to adapt to your schedule. That's right. Well, I, this I did actually come when I was very busy because mm-hmm. I realized that my mind is really getting faster. Mm-hmm. So I think I need to well, give me ten five minutes break. I just want mm-hmm. to hide in a quiet place and just uh, you know yeah. concentrate and then my mind that up. Right. Well, that's also a good thing to, to take a five-minute meditation break. You know, and that's a really good thing to do. Uh, you know, one sneaky place you can do that: you go off to the washroom. You know, <laughs> <laughs> make sure there's enough other washrooms in the building when you do that. <laughs> but, yeah. Then, if you can't do a long meditation for break, uh, meditation set, do do two small ones. Two small ones is better than one small one. <laughs> and it's also better than saying, okay, I'm going to do a long meditation session every morning, and then uh, two out of three mornings you can't sit the whole time because something else comes up. If that happens to you, then say, okay, this is not reasonable. And, you know, do two short sits. So. My, one time we joined a psychology kind of seminar, and uh, the instructor says that our intention, non ordinary mind, can only sustain like four minutes. Yeah. So his suggestion is four minutes each day, four times like that. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So, but that's for yeah. just to 
calm your mind, maybe not really as serious meditation, what it talks about here. Yeah, well, four minutes, five minutes, several times a day. That's great for calming your mind, but it's not going to take you very deep. <laughs> it's not. And, you know, uh, when psychologists say the human attention span is this much, you know, uh, that may be true of the average person taking it off the street, or they've probably done studies with college students, and it may be true of the average college student doesn't mean it's what the mind is capable of. It just means what the average mind... You know, that's, that's like saying the average human being is capable of doing three push-ups. You know? <laughs> <laughs>